What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today's down and dirty. We're gonna learn how to hook up a breaker on an excavator. So this is what we're working with today. Uh, we've got a Case CX-130 here and we have this uh, FRD Kent hammer uh, that we have hooked up to the machine. Now for the sake of the length of this video, we are not actually going to hook this thing up. As you can see, it is already hooked up, but I am going to walk you through the basics of how you're gonna do this. So when we actually hook this unit up to the machine, uh, we would actually lay this flat on the ground so that this is actually resting on the ground. Um, you have two coupler styles when it comes to these. You have uh, either the, the regular pin style coupler here or you're going to have a quick connect. This particular machine has regular pins and so in order to take this off of here, um, you've got a bolt right here and you've got a bolt right here. You would take those out and then you would hammer your pins out. Quick coupler obviously is significantly easier because you're just gonna grab onto it with a pin grabbing coupler. Now, when it comes to the actual hammer, this is the hammer itself, this main body of the, of the hammer. That's where all of the action happens. As you can see, we've got this blue piece right here that is bolted on. This is not technically part of the hammer. This is called a top cap, and that is what they use to mount the hammer to various different carriers. So this particular hammer is probably a little too big for a skid steer, but maybe one or two sizes down, you could have this exact same hammer running on either an excavator or a skid steer. All they're gonna do is replace the top cap with a top cap that has a skid coupler on it. So these hammers will work on four or five different size machines, just depending on the hammer, the flow, uh, and how much pressure you've got to work with. And that is why they have a top cap that will adapt it to a lot of different machines. So as I said, this is the actual hammer inside here. Here is where the, where the action's happening. And then you actually have your shank. We're set up with a chisel tip. Uh, they also have blunt tips and they have points. So a point, obviously it comes to a point. A blunt tip is actually gonna have almost a round surface or a flat, uh, flat head on it. And then this is a chisel because as you can see, if we get down here low enough, uh, you can see it does come to a chisel point. So that is the basics of the hammer. Now when it comes to hooking this thing up, uh, once you get it in, we're, once you get it mounted to the machine, pretend that our hoses weren't hooked up here, but we did have it mounted to the machine. The next thing you need to do is the hose work. These are going to most likely be quick connects. If not, you may need a set of wrenches and you're gonna have uh, your couplers right here. And then this is your valve that is going to turn on and off your auxiliary hydraulics. So if you don't have an attachment, you will actually have to, once you get this line hooked up, you're going to have to rotate this 90 degrees. And there's another one on this side, 90 degrees. All that's doing is opening this valve up so that hydraulic oil can flow from the actual auxiliaries down into the attachment. If you hook this up and you've got all your lines right and for whatever reason the thing won't run, verify that you open these valves up so you don't look like an idiot. That's all there is to actually hooking up the attachment. Now there is one other setting we're gonna change in the cab. I'm gonna meet you guys in the cab and we'll talk about that here in just a second. Okay guys, so we are now in the cab of the machine and we have one last setting that we need to change here and it is right down here. Uh, depending on the machine that you're in, it might be buried in the menus, it might be readily available like it is here, but we are gonna change our attachment type and we are going to make sure that we are set on breaker not on a set of jaws. Why are we doing that? What is this doing for the machine? Well, this set of auxiliary hydraulics out there on the boom can either be one-way flow or two-way flow. What that means is two-way flow means that if you've got something that's gonna pinch, so you need one direction of movement and then you need a second direction of movement, that's two-way flow. That's when we're gonna use our little rocker here for our auxiliaries because we need both directions. Hammers, augers, uh, any sort of attachment like that needs one-way directional flow because if you reverse flow through the hydraulic motor, you will actually blow that hydraulic motor. So it's very important that you make sure you switch this over. On mini and mid-size excavators, this might not be in the cab. There is a physical valve outside of the machine in one of your panels that is going to be where you switch that one-way, two-way hydraulic. So that is, that is critically important that you switch that over to make sure you are in one way directional flow. The only other thing I wanna cover, uh, just from a maintenance standpoint on these hammers, is it is very important to grease these. And each 
manufacturer, I wish I could tell you that everyone had this standardized, but each manufacturer is going to have their own spin on it. There are some manufacturers that make special grease tubes that actually screw up into the attachment and it will auto grease. Um, sorry, the truck driver's looking at me recording. Yeah, just come around. Yep, sorry guys. Um, my truck driver is trying to figure out where he's going. Um, so some of them have an, a physical grease tube and it will auto grease itself as you run it. This particular one, I don't know if you guys can make it out on the camera, but there's a little bit of a hole um, towards that little bolt-on panel there towards the bottom. This one requires that you squirt about 15 squirts of grease every morning to keep everything lubricated in there. And basically it's the piece that's moving up and down and hitting the hammer, the actual shank, that's what you're greasing. So it's very important to grease that and keep it well greased because you will hear when we start using this thing, it moves a lot. You need to keep that thing lubricated. So that's gonna do it for today's Down and Dirty. Again, this is just how to set up a hammer and get it ready to use. And again, we didn't actually pull the pins because that would have taken way too long to film along with hooking up the lines. Um, but this is the basics of hooking up a hammer. Check back here in about a week, we're gonna have our video on how to run the hammer. So with that being said, I hope this is helpful. Shoot any questions or comments down below and we'll catch you guys on the next Down and Dirty.